Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to uh, the Bad Lab Policy Roundtable uh, 22, I believe. Uh, recently, and, and also not recently, but throughout the last 10 years, uh, there have been questions about Pakistan's uh, project of federalism, whether or not Pakistan can be governed the way that it is configured. In 2010, through the 18th Amendment, which was a compendium of 63 uh, amendments to the Pakistani constitution, uh, this question was supposed to have been resolved. A consensus-based approach uh, led by a legitimately elected uh, parliament uh, that came about after a reasonably long struggle against uh, a military government was supposed to have ended the conversation about the quantum of provincial autonomy that would work for a country like Pakistan, which is diverse, not just ethnic, uh, ethnically or uh, in terms of uh, regions or provinces, but diverse uh, also in its politics and the way that people uh, relate to the state and, and to their identity as Pakistanis. Uh, in, a, in a repeat of a question that keeps coming up over and over again, the government recently announced its an intention, and it made this, it's made similar announcements multiple times, but its intention to hold provinces to account uh, for their spending. And now, of course, every, uh, every aspect of uh, this country's public sector should be held to account for its spending. But when the federal government announces such a, uh, a, an intention, uh, the assumed underlying intent behind it is that the contest for fiscal space uh, between the center and the provinces and amongst the provinces that those different uh, and varied competitions uh, have reached uh, the stage where uh, they need to be aired out and resolved. Uh, we have tried to assemble a fantastic panel. We think it's fantastic. We, we hope you'll agree uh, to deliberate on, on the question of provincial autonomy and to what extent the NFC requires uh, revisiting or not. Uh, and we've tried to be uh, as uh, fair in the uh, dispersal of political parties and, and provinces as, as we could. Uh, we're delighted uh, today to be joined in this conversation by uh, Senator Sanaula Baloch uh, of the BNP. He's, uh, he's, he's been a long-term uh, representative for her party and his people, in, in, and currently he serves as a member of the political assembly in the Balochistan Assembly. Uh, we're joined by Dr. Professor Bengali, who really needs no introduction. He's uh, the architect of uh, the world-renowned BISP and now uh, BISP Esas program. Uh, he's also been uh, deeply embedded inside uh, the state machinery as far as the negotiations for uh, provincial autonomy and certainly the idea of fiscal federalism. So we're delighted that he's part of this conversation today. Uh, we're joined by the former finance minister, uh, Dr. Aisha Ghos Pasha. Uh, she's the former finance minister of the Punjab, represents the BMLN in the, in the National Assembly currently, uh, and a, a, a renowned uh, author, academic, uh, and, and uh, somebody that we're, welcome, uh, we're welcoming to the Tabad Lab Policy Roundtable for the second time. So thank you for being with us again. And I'm especially happy today to be joined also by Senator Noman Vazir, uh, who is a senator uh, in, in the current Senate and uh, represents the Pakistan Tariq Insaf. Uh, finally, uh, weather allowing uh, and other factors allowing, we'll also be joined by Temur uh, Jagra, who is the finance minister uh, in the great province of Khairul Pakhtunkhwa and obviously represents the Pakistan Tariq Insaf. So we have, uh, we have a reasonably, I, I think, a reasonably exciting and good mix of voices. Uh, I wanted to lay out a couple of ground rules, and I was thinking I should I should set them out before the conversation. But I thought let's experiment and let's do it live, so so people can see even the setting of the ground rules. And the one thing I thought that would be useful to avoid in today's conversation, with with all of your permission, is the kind of very uh, binary debate um, that tends to take place about the military budget. And the reason I think we want to avoid it is very simple. There is no revisiting the military budget as far as Pakistan is concerned in today's day and age, given all the different things that are happening. Uh, there may be merit to having that discussion. Uh, I don't think that I, I'm competent to, to hold that kind of a conversation simply because I don't think it's a realistic outcome 
for the foreseeable future. So I think what we want to debate is within the realm of the possible, what are the things that are possible? So I think a very open uh, discussion. I hope everyone will challenge each other and certainly challenge me uh, on my questions. I hate to start with the Punjab, but given that the Punjab has been getting so much flack and the only person, uh, you know, formally uh, representing the Punjab uh, currently in the group is uh, Dr. Pasha, uh, I think, Madam, we are bound to uh, sort of yield the floor to you. And I want to frame uh, the question very specifically. In 2009 and 10, in the run-up to the NFC award, the seventh NFC award, and in the run-up to the passage of the 18th Amendment, it was in fact the Punjab's concessions around population-based formulas for the NFC that probably was the magic silver bullet that helped achieve a consensus. In a country where the biggest province is capable of not just arriving at an agreement, but giving up its own share in order to achieve consensus. What is it about the debate today that makes us worry that somehow federalism is under threat when such announcements come from the government? Why can't we take this at face value and assume that there are fiscal mechanisms and measures uh, and, and situations that exist that require a revisiting of the NFC come what may in terms of that discussion? Dr. Pasha. Uh, thank you, Musharraf, and thank you, for first of all, for inviting us. And this is extremely important subject that we are talking about. I am a firm believer of this, uh, of the fact that there is, you know, there is strength in diversity. And if you devolve and you let the provinces be autonomous, make their own decisions, they, uh, there's better accountability, there is better service of the, uh, the, of the people of that ter territory, that the province, and so on and so forth. So when the seventh, you were referring to the seventh NFC award, I think it was a hallmark award, uh, because, simply because of the feeling of fed federation was strengthened. Uh, the, the largest province gave up 2%, in fact, more, a little slightly more of its own share to accommodate the smaller provinces. And that kind of a the spirit uh, actually strengthened the federation and there was consensus. And after a long time, an award was announced. So uh, that kind of an environment has to really operate. Now, what has not happened in the post seventh NFC award that is now, that we now keep hearing about all of these things. See, in the seventh NFC award, while all of this was devolved, it was an, there was an understanding that the provincial uh, that the federal government will increase its revenue base. The provincial governments would also increase their revenue base, and they will, you know, in the spirit of uh, you know accountability in that respect, they will all contribute and you know uh, be able to uh, better serve their respective uh, governments. What ha happened in the post NFC period? Uh, especially, um, you know, since then, we didn't meet our revenue targets. So federal government is crunched with res uh, with a shortage of resources. It wants to now, fe it feels that it's unable to service its own uh, services, given the funding available. And it is now in some ways blaming the NF seventh NFC award that too much was given to the provinces. And um, because of that, it's unable to meet its own obligation. This is a very wrong premise. This is, a, it's factually not correct. Had the award continued, the previous award before the seventh NFC and revenue transfers had continued even then, the budget deficit that the current federal government is carrying would be there. Less than one third, in fact, close to one fourth of the budget is maybe attributed to higher transfers to provinces. The remaining of it would have consisted, existed even then. So this is a wrong thinking on the part of federal government. They are focusing on wrong issues. I think what they need to, what we need to focus as a federating unit is that how do we increase the pie? The question here is of increasing the size of the pie and not questioning the share of respective governments in that pie. This is what is happening. And uh, this, uh, this has to change. 
uh, in the spirit of further strengthening the Federation and moving forward. I'm very clear in my mind that we are focusing on the wrong issues. The question here is not of sharing of the pie that should be questioned. The question should be how should the pie size be increased? We are not focusing on the right thing. The federal government has to think through it. The provincial governments have to play their own role. And that is the way forward in strengthening the federation and letting it move forward. Very clearly, very clearly in my mind. No, that, no, that is really clear. Really, I think it's also a start sort of, uh, it, it lays the ground for, for this conversation in, in kind of very stark terms. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, Senator uh, Vazir, I, I want to bring this to you, given that, um, you know, Dr. Saiba has clearly stated that the issue here is not really uh, an issue of what share each of the provinces should have or what share the government should have, uh, the central government, the federal government should have. But really, it's a question of the failure to raise revenue. Uh, now, you obviously, uh, you know, having a business background and understanding the kind of burden that businesses face, um, you also understand that, you know, given the population, uh, the large share of the population that is young and not wealthy, in fact, poor, you know, there are very few options for the federal government to raise revenue. Uh, some people might say that it's actually the responsibility of the provinces to also raise revenue. How do you, how do you deal with this question of, uh, the essentially the absence of fiscal capacity in Pakistan's system. This is really a question, uh, to my mind, about fiscal capacity. Uh, wh where do you stand on this? Senator Nauman Bazi. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Aisha has, uh, has her opinion about uh, increasing the pie. I agree with her. The pie size has to be increased at the federal level. At the province level, all Capras, that is the uh, provincial revenue authorities, they have uh, had a tremendous increase in their revenue. Like in KPK, uh, we last year, uh, this year collected uh, 17 billion, which is about 70% 70, 70 increase in revenue for the uh, uh, provincial this thing. Having said that, the provinces are uh, charged basically on services, they don't charge on goods. Services under the 18th Amendment is part of the province. Now, uh, as far as the provincial revenue collections is concerned, I think amongst in the 18th Amendment, uh, the biggest advantage is to the province of Sindh. Most of the services, like we have a two, total amount of 240 billion, which is generated on services. 108 billion in Punjab, 100, 100, about 106 or 107 billion in Sindh. Now what Sindh is really generating over there is not actually for Sindh, it is for whole of the whole of the country. Most of it is the banking services or the service industries head offices are located in Sindh. So the Sindh government takes the pie of the rest of the provinces and keeps it with themselves, which is, I think, is wrong, which has to be looked into it. If the uh, services generated is for a particular for, for, because of a particular province, then that particular province should get the share into it. Now, um, uh, and then it should be all pulled down and disputed according to the NFC award amongst uh, all of the provinces. The services, total services generated in the country. So I basically want to look back and uh, look into it that the 18th Amendment, the most advantage that uh, any province got was Sindh. And at the disadvantage was both, all three other provinces, whether it is uh, Punjab, KPK, and Balochistan to a very large extent. Now, um, another issue that I would like to raise right over here is uh, the subsidies that the federal government is giving, whether it is uh, on the power sector, which is a lifeline subsidy, you know, which we give to the uh, uh, low segment of our society. Uh, our subsidies are all picked up uh, by the federal government. The wheat subsidies are picked up by the federal government. The sugar subsidy subsidy is fifth on export is 50%, 50% distributed amongst the provinces. So why shouldn't all these other subsidies be distributed amongst the provinces? And why should the federal government keep it all to themselves? Third and final point, what I write, say right at this moment is, the losses the state-owned enterprises are generating, it's about uh, 1,300 billion losses. It comes down to about five, 600 billion after some making money. But why a, 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 a industry or a service located in a province, which where it's getting, where it's generating employment, why should the federal government pick up all 100% of that losses? Why should the provinces take a part of that? 
So my views are like Pakistan steel mill or any such uh, thing in, in say in Sindh. Why should the federal government pick up all it? First offer should be made to the Sindh government that if you want to take our steel mill or other such entities, state owned enterprises, the province where it's located should have the right to take that over. And if that do, they don't take it over, then it should be given to a change of manager and first choice should be, uh, first right of rejection should be with the employees of that organization. And then it should be uh, uh, privatized or change of management like Habib Bank change of management. So these issues where federal government is picking up the burden of uh, the provinces on state owned enterprises, they have to be looked into it. Services are very serious. Now, what is happening in services? You know what Sindh government has started, Sindh people in Sindh have started doing? Manufacturing, they have converted into tolling industry, where they say we are doing, we are not manufacturing. We are buying raw material from party A, manufacturing for party A, and giving it back to finished product to party A. We are just tolling, and we, they term it as service. And the Sindh government is taking all that service. So what would happen? The revenue of the FBR would start dropping. And because of services, the revenue of the provinces would start increase. And the biggest loser would be KPK, Balochistan, and to some extent, uh, Punjab and Sindh won't be that much a loser. Sindh will, be, Sindh will be a gainer in that thing. So these are issues that have to be looked into it and uh, addressed. And that's why we say it's not only the 18th Amendment. The 18th Amendment, this part of the 18th Amendment, is a big loss to uh, uh, to KPK and Balochistan. So we have to really look into it. Uh, so Senator Saab, that was a, I think that was a, uh, I mean, I don't agree with uh, ha half the things you said, but that's not the point. The point is that you've introduced uh, some really interesting dimensions, uh, especially on subsidies and on the issue of state-owned enterprises and, and the loss, the bearing of the loss there. And also on the issue of competitiveness between revenue authorities, between the FBR and the provinces and amongst the provinces. Those are all great topics and I want to come back to them. But I want to take the conversation to Dr. Kesar Bengali uh, because I, I actually originally wanted to take it to Sanaullah Baloj, but uh, Senator Saab is, uh, we, we've just lost him. So I'll take it to Kesar Bengali and I'll let you uh, respond, uh, Dr. Saab, to the, uh, to the formulation that somehow the current uh, system of uh, distribution of resources between the provinces and between the provinces and the and the center is somehow benefiting Sin the most. Um, you'll need to unmute your mic and uh, look forward to sort of your take on whether you agree that Sin is uh, the big beneficiary of the 18th Amendment, especially from a provincial financing perspective. Dr. Bengali, that question was for you. It may be that uh, we've uh, we've lost Dr. Bengali, but luckily we've got Sanala Baloch back. So we'll come back to Dr. Bengali. Uh, Sanala Sab, uh, the uh, the Senator uh, Noman Wazir Khatak just mentioned and, and talked about uh, the biggest beneficiaries of well. Now we've lost Sanala as well, so. Uh, this is an interesting, Dr. Saab, uh, can you hear me? And did you hear my question? I can hear you, but can you please repeat your question? Very quickly. Uh, my question was, Senator Noman Wazir says that Sindh is the big beneficiary of the 18th Amendment from a provincial financing perspective. Uh, some may argue with that. I would, but I'd love to hear your take on whether Sindh is indeed the beneficiary. And what was the thinking? Given your own involvement over the years, what what was Sindh's position? What was Sindh trying to accomplish in having things uh, play out the way that they have? Okay. Firstly, thank you for organizing this very important and topical uh subject for discussion. Uh, I, I, it would be unfortunate if the real problem is with the federal government, uh, not uh, among provinces. But since these matters have been raised, uh, I want to make one clarification. Uh, certainly, Punjab's share dropped in the seventh. By the way, I, I want to also say that I was a member of the seventh NFC. And I am the, currently the member of the 10th NFC. I negotiated 
the seventh NFC and the terms afterwards. So I'm in 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 the knowledge of a lot of details uh, of the seventh NFC. Uh, the Punjab agreed to reduce its share because the federal government agreed to increase the vertical share. So for every hundred rupees that Punjab lost, it gained hundred and thirteen rupees. So while we certainly laud Punjab for and all the other provinces for a very gracious uh, attitude during the NFC and the five months that we were negotiating, and Dr. Aisha was part of the Punjab team at that time, although she was not representing Punjab, uh, uh, it was a very cordial five months, no acrimony at all. So I think consensus oriented process, not just the result. The points that have been raised by Senator Noman Wazir, I, I think there are several factual errors uh, that putting, placing GST services, uh, attributing it to the 18th Amendment is incorrect. It was there in the original 1973 constitution. The center had usurped provincial rights, which the 7th NFC gave it back. It is not part of the 18th Amendment. Uh, the other is that uh, uh, Sindh is benefiting, and he gave the example of the banking industry. What I had negotiated and the agreement that was made in October 2010, it is known as the record note. This was an agreement between the four provinces. All the detailed contentious issues sector by sector were discussed uh, or between March and October. And the formula for uh, telecommunications, for banking that was agreed upon was that the transactions that emanate from any province, the GST services on that transaction will go to that province. This as far as that agreement was concerned, it is incorrect that SIN is appropriating the share of other provinces. Now, if in the last 10 years something has changed, I don't know because I am not in the picture. But in, in, in these subjects like finance and telecommunication, telecommunications, it was by tower. Where the tower is located, telephone calls emanating from that tower, the service will go to that province. That is how it was agreed. It's in the record note uh, signed in October 2010, and it can be checked by anybody. Uh, tolling is has become a service. This is news to me. Uh, I have some relationship still with the SIN Revenue Board, and uh, never I have come across this, that industries are now labeling their products as service and uh, giving GST services to, if, if it is happening, that would be incorrect. I, I would certainly uh, not agree with that. But in my knowledge, uh, that has not come up. State uh, enterprise losses. If you want provinces to share the losses, then you have to share the profits as well. Is the, is the federal government willing to share profits of state enterprises? And there are many state enterprises that are profitable. Of course, a whole uh, myth has been created that state enterprise can never be profitable and private sector can never generate losses. There is a whole graveyard of private sector firms which have uh, died and the state has had to pick up their uh, losses. So, so if you want the provinces to share losses, be prepared to share provinces as well. But I'm really uh, upset about this targeting of sin. Uh, clearly, Senator Noman Wazir represents PTI, and Sindh is the only province where PTI does not have a government, and the PTI loses no opportunity to uh, smear sin. Uh, this is very unfortunate. If you want to run the federation as a federation, stop targeting one province, and stop using incorrect information to uh, lay out your case. OK, uh, uh, Dr. Bengali, I, I, I thank you for, I also, for, for expressing. I also, yeah. I also want to say that 
while Dr. Aisha is very correct, and all of us will agree that the pie has to increase, but I would say that the economy is very weak, all sectors of the economy, manufacturing, agriculture, and the potential for tax revenue is not there. What if you want to stabilize our fiscal base? It has to focus on expenditure reduction. It has to focus on civil expenditure reduction. There are more than 15 divisions in the federal government which need to be abolished outright. And you did mention that we should not talk about military budget. I will respect your opinion, but there is a combat side to military expenditure and there is a non-combat side. We certainly should discuss the non-combat side of military expenditure, but I will not do so today because just to respect your uh, red lines. I, I, I appreciate that deeply. Uh, Dr. Mignoli, the you. issue isn't really red lines. I think we want to develop a forum in which, which we can have serious conversation. My fear is that uh, these discussions, uh, they, they deteriorate into binaries. I know that you're capable, uh, much more so than, than many of us, of, of having a nuanced discussion. And the distinction you've made, I think, is one that many folks, both military and non-military, would appreciate that that is a legitimate area for us to at least consider. And we can have different opinions about that. So thank you for saying that. One thing I wanted to do, and, and what we've tried to do with these discussions, is for them not to descend into, um, into acrimony. So I think so far we're doing just fine because I think Senator Vazid has expressed his view. You've responded to that very politely and I think, uh, you know, warmly. And I think we'll give Dr. Uh, Senator Noman Vazid a chance to come back on some of those points. But I want to take the conversation to where I wanted to begin the conversation, which was uh, Balochistan. Uh, Sanaullah Baloch, you've heard the conversation so far. And one of the things that you heard was that uh, uh, the biggest beneficiary uh, was, was sin. Um, some people would argue, looking at the simplistic view from the numbers, that the absolute biggest beneficiary of the 7th NFC was actually Balochistan. And so if you don't know more than, than just looking at that data, you might say, hey, why are the people in Balochistan, whether they're Pakhtun or Baloch or Hazara or, or Mahajir or Punjabi and settled there, why are people in Balochistan still complaining when the 7th NFC was reshaped so that Balochistan would have more and so that Balochistan's share would be guaranteed. It wouldn't go below that. That was part of the agreement in the 7th NFC. Could you explain why we, we hear so much uh, uh, consternation uh, from Quetta and from our friends and, and brothers and sisters in Balochistan? Sanaullah. Uh, thank you, Musharraf. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry because of this uh, load shading and blackout in Quetta. Maybe my this internet connectivity is somehow a bit disturbed. I hope I will continue with my discussion. Uh, having such a very distinguished panel with Kaiser Bengali Sahab, uh, Dr. Aisha Sahab, uh, Noman Wazir Sahab, they very well explained the overall technical aspect of the NFC. Uh, the, techni the NFC itself has a political aspect as well. Uh, the Dr. Saiba and you yourself mentioned that uh, there has been some concession in the seventh NFC uh, and then that concession, particularly uh, the Punjab province, gave up some of his share to uh, accommodate uh, certain other provinces, more importantly, like KPK, Balochistan. Uh, I believe uh, after many decades, maybe we have slightly moved to a transparent, justified, uh, or what they call it, a uh, resource, finance, resource, financial resource distribution. But we have a long way to go. If you are looking at the population aspect, like the population criteria, where you are talking that Balochistan has been the beneficiary because we share six to seven percent population, but uh, in this NFC we are getting over ten percent, over nine percent uh, share from the NFC. But if you look at the resource perspective, if you look at the geographical perspective, if you look at the strategic perspective, if you look at the uh, the geopolitical perspective, Balochistan has been deprived from the very beginning. Isme Balochistan ko dekhen agar apne one thing I would like to uh, convey very clearly that uh, Dr. Noman Sab has has mentioned one aspect of the uh, that the Sindh has been beneficiary because wahan par kuch service industries hain. Amari taxes, amari uh, companies are registered there. Uh, maybe the import export is most of is taking place from Karachi port. So that's why Sindh has been beneficiary. But uh, when it comes to the other resources, if you really want to 
This is this is this been our case from the very beginning. For last 30, 40 years, ke Balochistan ke saath zyati kyu hai? Why Baloch, Pashtu, Nazara, or someone else is complaining? That ab jab NFC National Finance uh, Commission ne jab ab financial resource distribution ke liye formula banate hain, usme apne takriban 1952 se lekar abhi tak population ko criteria rakha. And in this NFC, definitely. Population is the major criteria. Or ye dunya ki kisi bhi federation mein nahi hai. Since we are talking NFC in the federalism context, in the federation context, uh, to usme aap kisi bhi dunya ke federal jo hai structure mein jaye, population is not the criteria. Area is one of the criteria. Underdevelopment, backwardness, uh, uske ilawa aap ki economic potential, natural resources, marine resources, aap ke geo strategic borders jo hain jo jis tarah baluchistan share karta hai over 2000 uh, kilometer borders with afghanistan and iran over 700 kilometer long coastline you can't develop you can't develop this entire province which is 62% of pakistan in terms of area both sea and land so you can't develop 62% of your country uh, giving it share based on its population so that's that's been our case from the very beginning that we are not satisfied even from this NFC award as well. And uh, that's why we are grateful that Dr. Bengali uh, uh, has been representing uh, Balochistan. Uh, you represented in the last NFC as well. And in this assembly, like we have uh, adopted a resolution clearly that a new uh, criteria must be included. If, re if you wanted to justify it, uh, transparent, uh, equitable share of natural financial resources that we have to include certain other uh, other criteria as well. KPK is well developed human development index. If you if you uh, if you have a look to the human development index, KPK Punjab, uh, some parts of Sindh are doing very well. The multi-dimensional poverty index 2016 of the Planning Commission and UNDP indicates that over 76 percent population in Balochistan lives below poverty line. And that, that's why we said that like in the NFC, the poverty estimates should be based on the current, uh, the multidimensional uh, multi dimensional poverty index or human development index, jo, the upcoming, I think the UN has, has already prepared that one. And uh, in, in, in addition to that, our marine resources, our economic potential, or NFC say, okay, they can see NFC is one aspect. Like la in last five years, 52 billion investment, uh, uh, landed to Pakistan in terms of CPEC. So if you exactly see, like the, in the NFC, we have received certain amount and we are only able to pay some salaries and try to, what they call it, to just simply continue with our normal life. We cannot have a very a strong develop, visionary development plan because we don't have resources, we don't have money. But in terms of developing last five years, five thousand billion or five thousand billion agar aap 52 billion ko multiply kare or five thousand to six thousand billions landed in different south pa pa pakistan where these developments have been uh what they call it um, planned kahan pe plan kiye gaye kahan pe inko implement kiya gaya so in including with nfc when it comes to isko bhi dekha jaye if some provinces have been deprived from the planning commission uh, policies, programs, unke benefits say, so they have to be accommodated in upcoming NFC. So, so my idea is that we have to have a very different look at, uh, to, to, to these, uh, these financial arrangements. If you really want to have a strong uh, federation, if you really want to have a political stability as well, because we are investing or spending money and resources to have political stability, to we have equal development opportunities. We need to have equal human development landscape in Pakistan. So for that, we have to have somehow change our discourse and discussion rather than focusing on small uh, aspects that which province is getting more and which province is getting less in terms of population. That discussion needs to be a little bit more uh, broadened. Thank you. Uh, there's no doubt, uh, Sanaul Abaloch, that in fact, I think one of the driving spirits behind the 7th NFC was to establish a new culture around the, the distribution mechanism and the formula. And, and to some extent, uh, Dr. Aisha Pasha, the, uh, you know, that, that, you know, there has been some success. But when we look at these statements that come from government and, and there's clearly, uh, there's indications um, that there are there are degrees of discomfort with the existing formula and the existing uh, regime uh, that uh, that are being expressed by unofficial sources and then once in a while by a by a federal minister 
uh, in this government. But to be entirely fair, when when you hear, uh, you know, Shahid Khalkan Abbasi and other PMLN leaders who were tasked with running the, the center in the previous government, even there, there was a sense that maybe it's not fair to, to make that attribution without them being here to perhaps contest it. But my own sense was that even the previous, the PMLN government did have a degree of discomfort on various aspects of how the fiscal equation exists right now. You mentioned revenue as the uh, magic sort of, you know, bullet in terms of fixing that. But I think a really interesting uh, challenge to that has been uh, put forward by Dr. Bengali uh, and, and in, in a sense by, by Sanala Balot as well, which is that you don't really have the economic growth that would allow you to raise revenue. So in the absence of that, where are we going to find the money to get along and, and, and go along? Okay, hey, uh, now Musharraf, um, you're right uh, that uh, there was Dr. concern. Basha, just because, and this sorry, I want you to continue, but just because we've been joined by the finance minister of the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, uh, Tamur Jagra, I just wanted to welcome him to the discussion. The floor is yours, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pasha, and we'll come to Tamur uh, Saab uh, very shortly. Okay, wonderful. Now, um, the thing is that the, 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 the first statement that you made, why are there complaints at the federal level? Uh, and the dissatisfaction at the uh, federal level about this whole um, transfer of resources to um, the provinces. Now, my point of view about this is all again very clear. See, if you look at the uh, distribution of the revenues, is uh, takes place because as per constitutional provisions, provincial governments have been allocated certain uh, revenues, uh, sources of revenue generation, certain fiscal powers, and federal government has been allocated, uh, you know, its own fiscal powers. The distribution is such that the boy and broad-based taxes have been uh, allocated to federal, le federal level. So by definition, they are generating a lot of the revenues, almost 90% of the revenues are generated at the national level. As opposed to this, if you look at the functional responsibilities, what are provinces responsible? The services which matter to a common man are provided by the provinces. Education, health, water supply, agriculture, SMEs, industries, transport, you name it, it's a provincial responsibility. So at this point of time, so 38% almost of the expenditure responsibilities are at the provincial level. So this, this imbalance between 9% revenue generation and 38% expenditure responsibility has necessitated this distribution that takes place in Pakistan at this point of time. Now, if they're saying that we have given you too much, what are provinces spending on? They are spending practically on everything that, are, that is needed by a common man. What is the functional responsibility as per the legislative, federal legislative list at the federal level? Well, they are looking after defense, they are looking after currency, they are looking after foreign affairs. What is it which is consumed by the people of Pakistan that is delivered at the federal level? So my point of view is simply, that if you retain more resources at the federal level, you are practically depriving the provinces and the people of Pakistan with basic services to ensure quality of life for them. So it is very important that this the, uh, the 7th NFC was a milestone because it did address this, recognize this. I remember very clearly that as Punjab, we developed, we presented a, a development framework and we indicated to them that the, the revenues that you're giving to the provinces are not enough to provide the services constitutionally the provinces are supposed to provide. You need to give us more revenues. What you're retaining are more than what you require because your allocation of responsibilities as per constitutions are different and very limited in that respect. So this case was made and we, uh, it was agreed 
and a big share was given by the federal government which was which was you know is credible and we should give credit to the federal government for realizing that the life quality of life of ordinary pakistanis will not improve social indicators will not improve until and unless more funding is given to the provincial level which as per the constitution is responsible for very very basic essential services to the people of pakistan now the problem is that the federal government now sees a lot of the revenues going down it needs more expenditures uh, to finance its own expenditures more revenues the reason i said revenue mobilization was an issue but this downslide is currently has is is a bad situation Uh, where the gdp has actually come down in even before covid it had fallen down to 1.9% so who's making a mess of the situation here uh, the the role, uh, the big policies are at the federal level they need to sit together and do this at this point of time yes there is uh, recessionary pressures your ability to mobilize more revenues is limited nonetheless it is still exists i still continue to believe that there can be some improvement at this point of time your the revenues have shrunk too much because of mismanagement at the federal level and also at the provincial level they need to address it but yes you have to cut back on your expenditures i agree with dr kesar bengali and uh, the the losses at the state owned enterprises have to come down there is a whole list of things that you can do to better manage it a whole set of things that needs to be done and the but for, uh, that set of things really does not should not just focus on taking away resources from the provincial level musharraf let me underline this again the services which improves the quality of life of people of pakistan ordinary citizens education health are the provincial responsibility no If that's that's very right. clear you take away from them they, these services will suffer and the people the, the and what will gain look at the federal legislative list we so, can sure. not I, I, this, uh, this is not the answer to the problem no i i i i agree uh, completely in fact uh, as you would remember what one of the key sort of talking points that we would uh, regularly uh ask people to remember and think about um during the LFL on campaign was how big of a burden the education sector was for the provinces because not no province was spending under 22 23% of their entire budget so when you have uh 22 23% of your entire budget going to just one of the verticals and we realized that in most provinces in fact in all the provinces on average you you were only servicing half the kids in that province because uh, many kids are out of school and this has been a point of contention uh, between myself and Tamur for many years uh, perhaps this is a good point in time uh, senator noman wazir i'm going to come back to you and give you a chance not just to respond to other things that have been said but maybe also to respond to some of the newer things but i wanted to uh, take this question to the finance minister and khabar pakhtunkhwa uh, tamur jagra look uh, temur the uh, the burden of delivering services on the province on the one hand versus the responsibility and in your case it's the ruling party so you have double responsibility to be a good pakistani and be a good member of the pti and and express at least some understanding of the pressure that the center is under both of these things have an additional twist which i think dr pasha hasn't explicitly mentioned but i think one of the things she's pointing to or at least the way i would interpret it is that the twist in all this is that if we're spending 25% of provincial resources on education every year and that expenditure is not producing the necessary outcomes so the level of satisfaction of the ordinary citizen even with the high levels of expenditure that are taking place that really puts uh the idea of the republic and the state and citizen state relations at great risk especially when there's so much uh, contentiousness and uh, and a servicness between uh some of the provinces uh, and other provinces and certainly between the federal government and and the provinces how do you in your current role uh, negotiate through all of these different uh pressures 
Look, uh, Musharraf, in real life, you simply try and get outcomes. Um, I don't think it's uh, just about negotiation. We, uh, being from a smaller province in the federation, uh, always have to try and raise our hands. And I actually feel proud. I think we belong to a province that has always uh, punched above its weight in a way and has actually, I think, owned the idea of Pakistan, despite all the accusations uh, or history of movements like Pashtunistan and so, and I think we'll continue to. Uh, I'd just like to comment on two or three things, as you say. For me, in fact, it's important. I think, first of all, the fact that provinces need to spend more, need to be given more money, that goes without a question. The way I'll actually articulate that is to say uh, that if you look at provincial budgets, if you look at provincial budgets, then you, while we typically run uh, balanced budgets, they're only balanced because we choose to or work under a framework where we don't spend more than we get. But as you said, it's not just that we spend about 20 to 25 percent on education. If you look at education and health together, we spend about 40 percent of our budget on these two services. Now, if you look at Pakistan's GDP spend on education and health, uh, the majority of which is owned by the provinces, it's about half of what it needs to be. You know, it's not necessarily that we just need more teachers or more doctors. It's actually that we need to spend more on hospitals and schools to have them as better service delivery centers for our community, right? So if we spend about 300 odd million on education and health, we should probably be spending 600 million if we want that education and health ecosystem to work in the way that it should next to our aspirations. So that's one element of where the provinces actually need to spend more, but you could actually also argue that it needs to spend more on areas like the maintenance of road infrastructure, the maintenance of the canal infrastructure. One of the biggest problems we face in Pakistan is we don't even define operational costs. Senator Noman Wazir will know this well. Uh, he's uh, one of the more progressive industrialists in the uh, province, he will know that what we do in terms of successfully getting industry to run is to invest in that industry, not open up a new factory every other day. So that's one thing. If you actually look at the service delivery expenditure that provinces actually do, it should be the double of what it is. Now, that's point number one. However, I want to change the framing of what at least I heard in the last 10 minutes a little bit. I think it is also a folly to say that the federal government needs to transfer more resources to us, right? Uh, because if you think of Pakistan as a federation, the provinces or the federating units actually add up to becoming Pakistan. And it is also clear, if I look at the books of the federal government, that the federal government should not be running a primary deficit, whoever is in government, that the federal government also to be able to play its role correctly, needs to be able to generate more resources and spend more resources. And whatever the federal provincial breakup of the NFC you talk about, you know what, the more resources the federal government generates, the greater my share will be. And that's the one thing that I've struggled with in the traditional federal provincial debate on the NFC is, it seems to be who should take a greater share of the pie. Whereas I think we need to change the rules of the game and this is particularly important because the next NFC is likely to come up soon. The, the, the actual question needs to be, how can we have a larger pie and work together to have a larger pie, a larger resource base, right? And that means two things. That means increasing revenues, 
And that rightly means, as you pointed out to, and I'm sure as you've talked about, reducing cost, right? And we can only do that if we work together, right? And that is what will actually um, free up the fiscal space that this country needs for the 6 or 7% sustainable economic growth. It's one thing in the 7th NFC to transfer resources to the provinces, absolutely correctly. But what has to happen after that and doesn't happen over the next eight or nine years is that the resource base of the country needs to increase to a point where that resource transfer becomes sustainable. And I don't just look at that as the job of the federal government. I look at that as our joint responsibility. In fact, I'm a big proponent of, you know, saying if 58% of the revenues of the FBR go to the provinces, why isn't there very clear provincial representation and co-ownership of the FBR? Because by revenue distribution, we're more than a 50% stakeholder in what the FBR uh, actually collects. But in the zero-sum game that we create in Pakistan, we tend to draw these hard lines. The FBR money is collected by the center. It's the money of the center. No, it's not. 58% of that money comes to me and Sindh and Punjab and Balochistan. And so the more money the FBR collects, right, without harming the economy or economic growth, the greater my share. I think that's something where we need to completely change the rules of the game, right? I'll, I'll throw in another controversial idea as we, I, I just want to take a couple of minutes on this because, you know, I'm when I go to negotiate, I don't just go and ask for money because I think that's the one thing that we've all been doing. Everyone goes and says, we're broke, we need more money. We've tried to invest the last two years with a very small and modest resource base and doubled our revenues in terms of sales tax on services in two years. We would have done it in one year if COVID hadn't happened, right? So I go and say, look, I'm playing my part. And then what I want is for the federal government, not just to deal with me party to party, but deal with me government to government, because if there's economic growth in KP, that's to the benefit of Pakistan, right? Um, in that, take, for example, agriculture tax, right? I don't see why we shouldn't consider an option where although agriculture tax is a provincial tax, like some other taxes, there are taxes that the province collects on behalf of the federal government, uh, and there are taxes that the federal government or the FBR collects on behalf of the provinces, right? I think Pakistan must be one of the few countries where income tax is segmented in this way so that rightly, uh, you know, a lot of potential large landowners in this country do not pay agriculture income tax in the way that they should because it's fragmented and you hear all these stories of you know, people hiding income under the guise of agricultural income. Because I'm, as the province, meant to collect that, but I don't actually have the data to, uh, to, to, to correlate this with the actual uh, income tax declared by individuals or corporations, right? There's no reason why I shouldn't, you know, enter into a partnership with the federal government to say, collect agriculture income tax for me, and then give it to me, taking the one or two percent. I'm only able to collect 70 or 80 million a year. And whatever I do, even if I double it, I won't be able to collect more than 150, 160 million or so. That's peanuts. But if we actually want to, you know, we keep on hearing about agriculture income tax, if we want to collect it uh, or, or actually get it to contribute to the economic uh, growth of this country, by enabling government to invest in agriculture, then the current model is flawed and we need to break out of our boxes to, to, to get that right. Similarly... So, so, so Taimur, I, I think... Uh, sorry, I, I, I just want to... One, I just want to remind you that we'll have a chance to come back to you and and I don't want to lose uh, some of our other esteemed panelists, Taimur. 
the the only other point I want to add, move on, I'll take 30 seconds is, you know, when we talk of cost cutting as well, I know it's not strictly the mandate of the NFC, but the Prime Minister yesterday talked about a huge pension problem that we have. It runs to 500 billion to a trillion rupees a year, right? To solve that, we'll need to work together because there will be, the pension problem is a public sector pension problem. And if we solve it in one pro province alone, there'll be civil servants in one province talk, uh, talking about what's happening in another province and so on. So it goes back to working together to increase the fiscal space that's to the benefit of everyone. Got it. I think there's a lot of great ideas there. Uh, Senator Noman Wazir, I, I wanted to bring one of the, I, I mean, Temur has talked, uh, given us a lot of material and I think some of the interesting ideas that have emerged, um, uh, we, should, we should actually list them out. Uh, certainly the idea of uh, provincial ownership of the FBR, and there's really interesting ways of trying to, to achieve that, uh, is definitely something I know has been discussed in the past, and I think I'm glad that Temur's brought it up again. It, it is an important idea that, that merits more debate. But uh, Senator Wazir, a lot of the changes that Temur is talking about require what he himself characterized as the ability to come together. And, you know, Dr. Kesar Bengali has fallen off uh, because of internet issues. Hopefully he, he comes back. Um, but just looking at the exchange, you know, that you had with him, uh, perfectly legitimate. And I think important to have robust debate. But it made me think maybe this whole thing is rigged to begin with. Because in a sense, the NFC as a forum uh, incentivizes provinces and the federal government to, to speak in a way that serves their interest at the expense of somebody else's interest. And this whole uh, sort of zero sum uh, approach obviously will create moments where no matter what you say, it'll be at the expense of somebody else because there's only a hundred percentage points and you have to get your share out of that hundred percentage points. Are we in a place, uh, do you think, where it would be possible to have a responsible and mature uh, mutually beneficial discussion in the way that it happened in 2010. Do you think that today in 2020, 10 years later, there's room enough for us to continue to engage so that we find consensus outputs from something like the NFC? Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, uh, people who are in the NFC, uh, National Finance Commission or the award giving uh, this thing. Uh, they should be mature and they should look primarily at Pakistan interest first and then look into provincialism. So my number first point is this, and since Kasar Bengali sahab is here again, sitting over here now, back, back here, let me just put it clear. I, my views that I express are my views. And uh, I don't, uh, these are not PTI government views. Maybe they are the same, but these are genuine views that I have. Uh, like if I talked about uh, my, I really feel bad. I feel really feel sad for the people of Sindh and Karachi as well. I be, I stayed from 1977 to 81 in Karachi as a, when I was doing my engineering. The Karachi then was totally different. Kesar Bengali would agree with me than what it is today. And I feel very sorry for the people over there. And I say there's so much money going in over there, and it's not being spent properly. So it hurts me and pains me for the people of uh, people of Sindh. Now, as far as the uh, the NFC award is concerned. Uh, the art, Article 160 of the Constitution, Constitution, Clause 3B, very clearly says monitoring implementation has to be done by NFC. So monitoring and implementation would be done and has to be seen how the, well that money is being spent. Whether it's KPK or it's SIND or anyone, that has to be looked into it. Now, again, I would like Dr. Kesar Bangari to correct me. I'll put some facts in front of him. Uh, Octra was abolished and uh, sale tax was increased from 15% uh, to 17%. So there was a 2% increase when Nawaz Sharif was the Prime Minister. And uh, the only province that still gets the advantage, I mean, Tamur Jagra would like to listen to this, is the uh, province of Sindh, where 1% grant and aid is provided to, uh, <laughs> to uh, Sindh from the NFC uh, and as a part of the Octra, and no other province gets that. Then there is the Worker Redwood Fund issue. Worker Better Fund. Now that most of the workers in, uh, in Karachi and Sindh and also in the mines in Balochistan, most of them in Karachi are, are people from KPK. The whole of the Worker Better Fund, which has been uh, devolved now to provinces, 
the whole of that thing goes to the uh, to uh, the worker welfare board in for sin but the families of the workers reside in kpk so why shouldn't kpk get that part so this issue has to be looked into be sorted out then the issue comes in at the port all imports which are being made all imports are charged port charges which rightly enough we should pay the port charges but then the sin government charges us 1.3% cess at cess at the port from all imports done for all provinces now all imports for punjab or baluchistan or kpk this 1.3% has to come to that particular province sin cannot retain that thing like in net hydel net hydel kg and kazi formula was written off and we had a capping of 6 billion actually if we have kazi kg and kazi formula it is on the bus bar at mardan that we have to pay the charges the difference between the the total charges in pakistan the rate in pakistan which ntdc is buying and what is being supplied at the bus bar at mardan that difference is the uh, electricity payment that that hydel payment that has to be made to kpk which we never got so there are number of issues which has to be looked into private sector losses let me ask dr kesar mugani tell me one case in pakistan where private sector like us and other countries losses have been picked up by the government never always the losses state owned enterprises are passed on to me the taxpayer all of you sitting over here is taxpayer so and this dr kesar mugani rightly said that if profits right profits should be shared with the state owned enterprises with the province but also the losses that are taking place which is about 5 600 billion every year that has to be picked up by the province and federal government is cannot keep the burden of these losses that we are taking they have we have to sort this thing out transport up country transport originating from karachi coming to punjab to kpk the service charges are being charged at karachi why shouldn't the transport which is coming to punjab or kpk why shouldn't it be service charges be charged from uh, given to that particular province so such things uh, like the things which are all these issues have to be uh, look we have to really put the facts down in front and i think uh, we all are ready to i mean we're all mature enough to listen to each other's views and then after putting the facts down coming to a conclusion which is the interest of pakistan number 1 and then secondary to the interest of the province as well this is what our approach should be thank, thank you uh, senator wazir i wonder if uh, dr bengali is still with us i know that he's having some connectivity issues uh, and and i think we've lost him again we'll let, let him reconnect because i think it's important for him to have a chance to respond i mean i have some views that uh, that that are very different uh, from senator uh, naman wazir's but but i will forego uh, the, the temptation to to jump in sanala baloch let me ask you what i was going to ask kesar bengali look uh, if i listen to this conversation uh, as as a kind of a i just came into the conversation and i see the exchange between naman wazir and kesar bengali one of the thoughts i might have is hey this is or as i said before this is rigged there is no other way this conversation will go except the the kind of uh point counterpoint count uh counterpoint point uh, so it becomes a tennis match and i think he's right i think everyone in this panel is mature enough to be able to hear criticism and even things that they may not believe to be true and and respond to it all of that is possible but from a formula perspective unless there is leadership uh, and a commitment to reaching consensus aren't aren't all of these fora going to end up uh, sort of uh, ruining the idea of federalism rather than consolidating it sanala baloch you need to unmute before you speak sir thank you uh thank you musharraf i think this kind of conversations are definitely encouraging it's good good since uh, we all of uh, us are going through a very difficult situation uh, financial crunch is not only affecting the federal government but at the lower level Uh, the provincial level uh, we are facing directly the overall burden uh, in terms of providing public service to our citizens uh, whether it's health education uh, our infrastructure human resource development even economic development when like our colleague uh, dr raisha sahib mentioned ke agar jab aapke paas resources hi nahi to how are you mentioned rightly that ke hamare paas jab when we don't have resources how we are going to be able to provide even some revenue to the federal government तो मैं जो तक तक वर हाल डिस्कशन अगर आप इसको लेना चाहेंगे तो इफ यू वांट टू एवरीथिंग द फेडरलिज्म कंटेक्स्ट उसमें ये है कि दीज आर 
technical issues and definitely these issues have been in the discussion and debate in all these nfc debates and discussions for long hum agar gas ka shuru kar dein tobacco ka hai gas surcharge ka hai hamari gas ki 58 se discovery aur uske prices ka value ka is इकोनॉमिक वैल्यूज की उसकी शेडो कॉज ये सारी चीजें दीज आर गोइंग टू बी वेरी मच वो क्या कहते हैं कि स्मॉल लेवल टेक्निकल डिस्कशन वी हैव टू एव इट टू सेटिस्फाई आवर सिटीजनरी वी हैव टू एव सेटिस्फाई आवर सेल्फ दैट वी आर प्लेइंग ट्रांसपेरेंट विद ईच अदर वी आर नॉट रिगिंग ईच अदर वी आर नॉट लूटिंग ईच अदर वी आर नॉट एक्सप्लाइटिंग ईच अदर द एफ बी आर डिस्कशन और कुलीग जगह सबसे वेरी वेल वट आई सजेस्ट लाइक एन एफ सी मॉनिटरिंग एंड इवेल्यूएशन एन एफ सी सब डोंट हैव अट अंडर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अंडर द उसमें यह है कि एन एफ सी का अपना एक सेक्टियट होना चाहिए था एन एफ सी शुड बीन वेरी इंडिपेंडेंट इन पांच छह सालों में एन एफ सी सेक्टियट शुड बीन प्रोवाइडिंग प्रोवाइडिंग ऑल दीज डेटा इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इवन ट्राइंग टू सेंसिटाइज to the general public about the overall financial uh, resources about the fiscal decentralization and even about the utilization and it's rightly mentioned that we have this issue because the money which has been transferred to the provinces have not been properly used or utilized in the provinces because there is no monitoring there is no evolution there the uh, evaluation process what i suggest the discussion itself is definitely it's 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 it's, it's constructive Uh, they have different opinions different views we have more grievances than i think the sin and the kpk but what i personally suggest that we have to go behind this discussion the number one uh, anywhere in the world in, uh, in in any federal structure a federal system population is hasn't been the criteria for fiscal resource distribution or financial resource distribution even in the 1973 constitution under article 160 we don't have a single constitution which justifies the overall distribution criteria so the overall principle of distribution is wrong we have to fix that one first and then slowly gradually move towards the other technical aspects where the services uh, taxation uh distribution and even behind nfc when we get resources like cpec how we are going to distribute it on what criteria on what basis the planning commission will do it. the financial resource distribution a fiscal resource distribution is definitely related to somehow nfc but beyond nfc we have to have a, a more open uh, debate and uh, to accept uh, each other's ideas and try to move forward thank you uh, uh senator baloch i i think absolutely right i think the the debate is absolutely vital uh i'm looking at the at the black screen and i hope that that's the video off but that dr kesar bengali can hear me dr bengali can you hear me you can turn off video if you think that'll help but i really want you to uh have a chance to speak because i think there's a number of things you may want to respond to and i also want to pose a question we'll give dr bengali another uh, shot at uh, at reconnecting perhaps um let me take this back to uh, dr uh, aisha ghos pasha again having done this for the punjab uh, and punjab being the big, biggest province with the caveat that was made earlier uh formulatically what what is the change that you think this this requires if any or do you think that national leadership uh, especially from the large parties needs to essentially get over whatever extreme views it has and actually sit down and sort some of these things out because in an environment of extreme political polarization which i think we have right now in this country uh the idea that the nfc can reach any kind of consensus seems uh like a fantasy uh, and and really one of the reasons why we wanted to have this discussion and to have it with this group was to demonstrate that actually it is possible to respectfully engage across party lines for the sake of and it's not even for the sake of pakistan in the way that perhaps senator nomad wazir meant uh, i mean i think that pakistan will have different viewpoints including people from provinces who say no my province first now i may not agree with that but because they're a pakistani citizen i have to be okay with hearing what they have to say uh, do you think what is the solution uh, dr aisha waspasha uh, we actually have made why haven't we had we've had uh, an nfc award every 5 years which the constitution requires simply because we've made nfc negotiations 
a political thing. The problem is that unlike India, if I can quote you the example, they've had very systematically NFCs. Why? Because there's a proper NFC secretariat. It's a technical matter. Which revenue, uh, how much, which province, which subnational government should have what revenues should be determined through by fiscal need assessment. We have unfortunately not had that kind of technical support. We really don't know. This point that was is being made that population is is too much of a criteria, uh, too much weight is has been given to it. It's a wrong uh, criteria. Well. How do you measure fiscal assessment, fiscal needs of a province? It's measured. Population is used as a proxy because you do not have a proper measure of the fiscal need of the province. It has to be done technically. And in the absence of it, this is uh, we do it through a uh, population. It has to be that it, it has to be made a technical subject one. Given the polarization that exists, I don't think there can be consensus. Given this approach, you versus me, there can be no consensus. There has to be a, 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 a kind of a, a environment in which the federating units sit. They try and resolve their issues. There are solutions that can be uh, brought forward. I strongly believe that. I can give you a list of five or six things that needs to be done. But this government, at this point of time, the way they're going, that I'm going to monitor you. Why are you? Where are you spending your funds? Sin, what are you doing with your funds? No, this is not the environment in which we should be operating. Is this the way we run federations? And if, if we turn uh, the provinces turn around and ask the federal government, are you using your efficiently your resources? Federal government will not have much to say. See these kinds of accusations, anyone can live in. If you if this accusation is because current expenditures, you think provinces are spending too much too rapidly, the federal and provincial current expenditures are growing at the same level. The federal government's tax revenue growth is half of that of the provinces. So this kind of an approach will take them nowhere. What you need to do is the federating units should sit and they say they should say that listen. This thing has to be resolved. I think the way forward is the major change that has to take place in the distribution formula took place in the seventh NFC award. Now what we need to do is to just update the criteria. The criteria that we had based on uh, population is fine. You need to update it. Uh, in fact, uh, what I would tend to think is that uh, given the fact that uh, the population census at this point of time, the new population census has come forward, uh, the new weightage has to be now changed. Uh, if you look at poverty, if you look at revenue collection, all of that, if you update the, uh, the criteria, there will be some change. And I've done some initial calculations. From my initial calculations, it seems that there'll be a four percentage point, four percent difference in the share of the provinces. Punjab will be losing up to four percent. Other provinces will be slightly gaining. That needs to be updated. That would suffice. The other very strong point that I want to make very clearly is that the terms of reference given to this new NFC, uh, uh, which is being debated in the 10th NFC also, is that that provinces should really pick up some of the inefficiencies at the federal level is a bad uh, way forward. If you are not managing your debt properly, why should the provinces pay for it? We know that the bad debt management in the last two years has cost us, you know, a pound of flesh really big time. Uh, the debt servicing costs have gone very high simply because you didn't manage your debt servicing very well. You overdid too much too quickly, and that was bad debt management. Similarly, <laughs> how is it the province's responsibility? You need to you not let the provinces pay for the inefficiencies at the federal level. It it will create moral hazard problems. What I'm saying is that. You devolve, implement the 18th Amendment. Let the provinces take care of all that is devolved to them. They will put in, let ask them to do a good job of that. You take care of your own mess. 
because you're making a big mess at the federal level, pay for it yourself. One. Second, the revenue mobilization. At this point of time, the provincial over the since 2010-11 to 2019-20, the annual growth rate of provincial taxes is 20%. Of federal taxes is only 10%. Do a better job. That's the second point. The third point is that please use your resources better. A rupee, rupee saved is like a rupee earned. A po that point was made earlier also. Both the federal and the provincial governments need to do it. I'm not saying the provinces, uh, provinces need to do it, definitely. But I'm definitely not saying that the federal government is doing a better job. Because if you look at their cost per unit and their efficiency of expendings, with the throw forward that we see, uh, at the federal level, there are big question marks there also. Please do not. Uh, I'm sorry, sure. just because I, in the interest of making sure that we get uh, Dr. Kesar Bengali and uh, Taimur uh, and, and their views in, I want to ask you one question kind of on a positive note. Would you agree with the FBR, uh, the provincial ownership in the FBR that was proposed by Taimur Jagra? I just want to see if we can find some convergence between PTI and PMLN. Yes, I, I they can see there is there is this merit. But you know what? One other suggestion that can be put forward is that Sindh has said that sales tax on goods should be devolved, and uh, because devolution of sales tax on services has done wonders, provinces have done a fantastic job compared to the federal government. Uh, so it needs to be devolved. My point of view is that this 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 breaking up of sales tax between services and goods has messed up things badly. There are a lot of distortions being created. There is some talk of uniting them, having one tax collecting agency with provincial governments and federal government sitting together on it so that sales tax on goods and services can be merged with all federating units sitting on it is a good idea. I think the, the I think the time for national institutions of that nature actually is overdue in Pakistan anyway. Uh, Dr. Kesar Bengali, I hope we'll be able to hear you and I hope you've been able to hear us. Uh, but the floor is yours. There's a number of things that uh, Senator Noman Vazir said that I'm sure you want to respond to. And uh, and I also want you to comment on some of the things that Sanaula and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ghaz Pasha spoke of. Thank you, Musharraf. I don't want to respond to Senator Wazir. All his statements are factually So I, I, I'm not able to hear you anymore. I think Dr. Uh, Aisha is... Uh, very correct. Whoever has made a mess should Go pay ahead. for it. If the federal government made a mess of, on the debt issue, Go ahead, Dr. Bengali. We can hear you. We could hear you. Okay, we, we uh, clearly have lost Dr. Dr. Uh, Bengali again. The not mood, you're very, serving uh, Minister. Has not you're, been very... Uh, yes, Kushara? I, we, we, we lost you entirely, Dr. Bengali. Maybe you can start again. Okay. I want to say I, want to say I don't want to respond to Senator uh, Wazir's uh, comments. Uh, all his all his statements are factually incorrect, and he's just come here for a, with an anti sin agenda. I think not. I don't know about his uh, agenda, but he's from uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. But I want to I just point whoever has made the mess should pay for it. If if the if the federal government has made a mess of debt of public enterprises, they should not ask the provinces to chip in. 
the point about inspecting provincial finances is completely preposterous. No government in the past has gone to the extent of picking the province's pocket as this government has. And if the federal government claims the right to inspect the provinces to chip in. So this is this is a two way street. that I was able to hear let me, Dr. Bengali, you, you, uh, you've broken up and, and uh, I think we, we've got the gist of what you were saying. I think on the point about whether the provinces should be inspected or their finances or their expenditures should be examined by the federal government, you say, uh, and, and you've written this down as well for me, so uh, you had uh, typed out, my view on the topic is if the center wants to oversee provincial budgetary performance, Provinces should also be able to inspect federal performance. Uh, I, I take your point and, and we'll move on just because your connectivity right now is is, uh, is making it difficult to understand what, what you're saying. But I thank you for, uh, you know, persisting with the effort to uh, to express yourself and, and to participate in this conversation. Uh, Taimur, uh, as the only I, sitting I, minister. I am. I am. Temur is the only sitting minister uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this conversation. You are clearly uh, or must clearly be involved in th these dynamics uh, as we speak. Uh, how, again, I, you know, I tried to get you to comment on how you find equilibrium between the various uh, pushes and pulls that, that you're experiencing. Uh, and, and you've already spoken about the limited appetite for innovative or out of box solutions. But having witnessed uh, the exchange that you have and being involved uh, as as i'm i'm sure you are in in your, in your own negotiations for your province is there a need to revisit the modality itself the nfc modality or uh, as i had suggested earlier is this really a matter for leadership to uh, own more robustly and to force through uh, a, a better culture in terms of getting along and creating a consensus even after we have difficult conversation? No, I think there is. And I think there will be the appetite to revisit it. It depends on those of us who will sit in the forum. And I know that's what the Prime Minister will support. Every difficult issue that we've talked to him on, he keeps on talking about a win-win. Right? The problems, Musharraf, that we face uh, when we go to Islamabad are not of the party. When we talk of the lack of appetite for out-of-the-box solutions, it's institutional rather than party-based. Right? Remember that the actual day-to-day -day work of government is run by an administrative system that's in vogue for 70 years. That is led and includes some fantastic individuals, but that has a culture of its own, regardless of the party in power. Right? And it's our job to try and challenge how this country works. Uh, and it's their job to help us ensure that as we try and find the right path, that it actually um, uh, is implemented according to rules, the constitution, et cetera, et cetera. And there are big steps. I don't think you can blame the, uh, the political leadership for the lack of innovative appetite. You just saw yesterday the Prime Minister signing performance agreements with 40 ministries, right? That's the sort of thing that uh, we need to learn from in the provinces. And when we make something innovative, such as the universal health insurance scheme, I'm proud to say that the federal government picks it up from us and starts to replicate it across. I do think, uh, you know, the Senator Noman Wazir is someone that I've worked with and that I have the utmost respect for. And therefore, I must say, you know, it's, you know, if we get to this point where, and, and you know, I feel compelled to almost defend uh, his views to a point, we have even within the party the right to disagree with each other. But it's unhelpful when someone says, 
Senator Noman Wazir or someone from PTI has come with an anti-Sindh agenda. You know, we sit here in KP and we look at the PTI government gave Karachi the largest ever package that it's got. And we don't complain about why it's Karachi that's getting that package and not Peshawar. Karachi is as much a part of Pakistan. But, you know, we have to get towards this positive sense of working with each other, which many of us will. Yes, we're going to shout at each other politically. We're going to disagree with each other on content and substance as well as, uh, you know, on more frivolous matters. But I think when it comes to the next NFC, it will have a positive outcome if we set aside a lot of the notions. And yes, I agree that we need an independent NFC secretariat of experts that's co-owned by the federation. That means the federal government and the provinces. And two, then we need to think of a paradigm that takes care of the needs of all of Pakistan. You know, if you look at federal, if you want to break up federal government spending, and I study it because if we don't help the federal government solve its problems, then we're not going to make it easier for them to give us a fair deal. Um, there, I lived 15 years abroad, and there's always a debate, uh, even in the Pakistani diaspora, about whether Pakistan needs to spend on defense to the extent that it does. I think what the Modi government over the last two or three years has proven is that, you know, defense for Pakistan needs to be a priority and we need to find the right way to spend on it. The, the debt that the federal government accumulates is a problem for us, whether we like it or not, right? So if we can work together to start to make that debt sustainable, it's in everyone's interest in Pakistan. And similarly, I would like the federal government, this federal government, I know the prime minister does, and every federal government to take care not just of the federal government's expenses, but how it can maximize the resources that it gives to every province, right? Because that is what will make the next NFC successful. And one thing, because we worked a lot in preparation for the last one and are happy to share ideas. And that's why I think this is perhaps one of the most important debates I've been on is of how we can increase that resource base and think differently. The moment Balochistan tries to take resources from me or vice versa, you know, in the NFC, we all have the power of veto. But when we start to put in place some principles such as we'll walk out of this with a win-win, and there are ways to do that. For example, by, uh, you know, freezing the base that every federating unit gets. And by federating unit, I include the center. And then incentivizing each federating unit to, you know, get a proportion of its share based on what it actually does. And, and there's countries like India, like South Africa, countries in Latin America that are stronger federal systems that have moved towards such a framework. You know, we can all walk out of that happy, not having compromised on provincial rights, not having compromised on the integrity of Pakistan and the sustainability of the federal government with an NFC award that actually works for everyone. And that's what I would like to work towards when we sit down on the table next. I, I, th I thank you for that, uh, Taimur, because I was just listing out uh, the points of uh, agreement, despite, you know, the disagreement. Uh, and, and and to be to be fair to Dr. Bengali again, it's unfair because you know he hasn't been able to really express himself because of connectivity issues. But you know, given his vast experience with both the seventh NFC and the uh, and and NFCs after that, I certainly think he has uh, fully has the capacity to uh, basically hear uh, you know difficult messages, but also to respond to them. And I think this I, I agree with Senator uh, Vazir and with Sanaula Baloch. You know, I think that it's good that we have the expression of maybe stark disagreement. I don't think that there's an anti-Sindh agenda, but I do understand why many people in Sindh feel that this government in particular uh, has not been uh, as, as friendly as they would like. Having said that, one of the questions we got was from Sufyan Jabbar, and I want to read that out. He says, why is the center government doing expenditure into areas which are now a provincial responsibility like transport? Why is the center financing Karachi public transport, but not Peshawar BRT? 
so that would go to to your point, Tamur, about uh, the way in which Karachi has been treated. But again, I'm sure that you know people in Sindh will have uh, a response. We are up uh, for time, but I wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to read out a few questions and give uh, whoever wants to respond to them the opportunity to respond if you are okay with us going over time. And the second thing, and I'll do this again at the end, but I, I really am excited about this. In this conversation, we have four key areas of consensus that I wanted all of you to note. Number one, everybody agrees that more revenue is an absolute unavoidable and ur urgent necessity. Two, that uh, Temur's idea about uh, the co-ownership of the FBR, including by the provinces, is a good idea and needs to be explored further. Three, that there does need to be an, FC, an, an NFC secretariat. And so hopefully the federal government and the provinces will work on this and establish one. And three, that the revisiting of the formula, as Sanaullah Baloch mentioned, and as Aisha uh, uh, Hospasha agreed, that revisiting the formula is an urgent necessity because we have new data, including the census. So we do have multiple areas of consensus. I want to end on reading out a few questions. And again, as I said, give people the opportunity to respond to them. One of the questions we have here uh, from, well, these are comments, but again, please, please do respond to them. Uh, somebody called Crazy Fool 786. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's not a fool. Uh, says government must become automated and algorithm algorithmized. Send the bureaucrats packing and become hyper lean. The citizen of 2030 just needs an app to access government services. Uh, maybe one of you wants to respond to that really quick. Sheriff, I don't want to get in trouble with the bureaucrats, so I'm not going to respond to this. That's fine. I don't think Aisha Ghos Pasha wants to either. And, and <laughs> uh, Go ahead, madam. Musharraf, can I comment? Yes. Uh, Musharraf, can I, I comment on it? Yes, of course. If Dr. Saiba doesn't have anything to say, then we'll come to you, uh, Senator uh, Naman Bazir. Actually, let him go ahead first, and I will come in later because he's volunteering. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, let me tell you my views about it is that uh, we blame politicians all across the world if something goes wrong. I we had this program uh, on the British TV Yes Minister program where they always have the minister saying something, and the bureaucrat would come in, and with all his experience and knowledge, he would guide the minister. In Pakistan, the problem is our bureaucracy. We have a DMG officer who's supposed to be an assistant commissioner, a commissioner. He's going to be Secretary of Health one day. Next day, he's going to be Secretary of Energy, Secretary of Power. I'm sorry, you can't have it like this. You have to have particular fields. You have to be expert. This is not that age. You have to be a general, general purpose uh, uh, officer. So bureaucracy has to be professional. They have to have their own cadres, whether it's health, finance. Can you believe it? Who is the CFO of Pakistan? CFO of Pakistan is Secretary of Finance. He's a DMG officer. You have an ordinary corporate sector. Tamur Jagra is sitting over here. He's from the corporate sector. You never have a CFO who's not a chartered accountant. In Pakistan, we have never had, Pakistan never had a CFO who is a professional. So bureaucracy has to be professional. They have to guide the politicians and then the, the country moves forward. Doc Saiba, you need to unmute. Ma'am, you need to unmute. We can't hear you. Doc, Doc Saiba? I, yes, ma'am. Is that all right now? Because I didn't really. Gee, now we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Now we can hear so, you. So um, I have, um, give the, I'm going to speak from my experience with the government as well. I think. The technocrats at the policy level are the bureaucrats. They should really be providing that role, uh, the role of technocrats, advising right and not be politicized. Unfortunately, that is not the case it is. They are very concerned about the tenures. They are very concerned about the, tra the their postings and so on and so forth. So by the, at the end of the day, they really are... are or not providing the right kind of the, the things that they believe in, they are saying what they feel the other is 
willing to listen to, wants to hear. So uh, this is this is a major issue, and we see a very major deterioration in the level of bureauc bureaucracy. I remember when I started my research work, we had giant bureaucrats. Now we don't have them. So there is an issue. We need to make in, uh, the technical cadres more ca better. We need to ensure that they are not politicized. They need to be made, uh, you know, uh, the, the tenures have to be done. Technical cadres have to be done. So a lot of the problem lies with the way we are running the government at this point of time. Very clearly. In, and this whole pension problem, uh, Temur was saying, we tried to do this in Punjab. The fact of the matter is, until and unless the federal government agrees and the bureaucrats agree, nothing will ha happen. That is that is reality. So yes, the bureaucrats have uh, have <laughs> have a very special role to play in all of this. <laughs> well, I I'm delighted that uh, I've watched uh, people from different parties, uh, you know, on on the, in this conversation, uh, smile at each other. Uh, I'm also happy that there's been stark disagreement. It's it's the spirit of democracy. And uh, I, again, in fairness to Dr. Kasif Bengali, one of the he, he's just typed in another point. Uh, I think he's seconding what Dr. Aisha Ghas Pasha said. He says the federal government has made a, met, uh, a mess of debt management and state enterprises, and they should bear the responsibility. If I make a mess, why should someone else pay for it? Um, I, I think on that note, uh, I will once again reiterate with uh, with the uh, with, with all our experts and and, and August uh, members of the of the roundtable today. Um, with your permission, I'll reiterate that we've identified four areas of consensus. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any appetite for dismantling federalism in Pakistan, nor fiscal federalism. There is an appetite. Um, in fact, there's a clear need for a dramatically increasing revenue, uh, co-ownership of the FBR between the provinces and the, uh, and the uh, federal government. Uh, the establishment uh, and the staffing of an MNFC secretariat that is technically robust and can do what needs to be done in the interim between uh, NFCs. And finally, the revisiting of the formula and, and making sure that we're not just looking at population, but we're, we're building in the concerns of remote areas, uh, underserved areas and, and provinces, in particular Balochistan. Um, I hope I've done justice to the conversation with that summary. I don't think the disagreements merit uh, a rehashing. I'm extremely grateful to Dr. Kesar Bengali, to Sanaullah Baloch, to Tamur uh, Jagra, to Dr. Aisha Ghaz Pasha, and to Senator Noman Wazir Khatak uh, for joining us. And if any of you have anything that you want to add, please feel free to do it now before we close out. Can, can I make a point, uh, Musharraf? Just a very quick one. I, I think the data of on the criteria needs to be updated a major criteria changes in criteria will not be coming forward what we need to do is to bring in some things to incentivize like bring in and fiscal a matching grant for higher fiscal effort bring in matching grants for higher expenditure on population control for example those are required major rehashing is not on updating of data and incentivizing it so that it can move forward that is that is uh, i think the important part and i think the federal government should really uh, uh, not force the provinces to build in cash surpluses and so on and so forth clean up all those distortions uh, dr aisha has uh, we've demonstrated in this conversation today is that uh, Pakistan has all the political and technical tools it needs um, to, to develop that consensus. Uh, so inshallah, I look forward to all of you continuing to work together as you have before. Once again, with a special thanks to Temur, who I know uh, had to exit existing uh, commitments to join us, uh, and, and to everyone, Senator Vazir, uh, Dr. Aisha Ghaz Pasha, Temur uh, Jagra, uh, and uh, Dr. Kesar Bengali and uh, Sanal Abulakshoj. Thanks all of you for joining, and I look forward to welcoming you back uh, to revisit this conversation very soon. Thank you. Thank you.